divided by? Honey, there comes a time when you start to notice things about your body. Mom, um, I'm 20. It's these elbows. You need Jergens Ultra Healing Lotion. It's so smooth. Okay, let's work on your feet. Mom, and new Ultra Healing Hand Cream. Dry hands and love it. Jergens. Hey, everybody, don't forget to watch Candy Cane Christmas debuting Saturday on Lifetime Star. My new BFF, Beverly Mitchell. Sorry, Jessica Beale, she's mine now. There's enough to go around. No. Happening now. Domestic violence is a concern that has plagued Bear County for years, even more so in recent months. Now the DA's office is offering transparency through a new dashboard, how they say it'll help fight against domestic violence. Two candidates, one battleground state. I'm Nadia Romero in Washington. We'll take a look at the last minute plea for Florida. And it's been another beautiful fall day here in South Texas. Coming up, we're going to talk about what you can expect for the upcoming weekend, including a first look at your trick or treat forecast. It's never a good time for the furnace, the dryer, the water heater to break down. Coming up, your fall home checklist. Helping those in need stay warm. The Salvation Army is experiencing a blanket shortage. How you can help. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, they broke into a Northside shooting range on Monday and stole six firearms from display racks. Now a $5,000 reward is being offered in hopes of tracking these three suspects down. Investigators have video surveillance to help, and you can see they're pretty clear pictures. Yeah, the break in happened early Monday morning at the Mission Ridge Range and Academy off North Loop 1604 West near Northwest Military Drive. Three men in different colored hoodies were caught on surveillance inside and outside of the business. Investigators say they took off in a black Nissan Altima or similar model, and they had a black duffel bag with red boxing gloves and white lettering with the words hit it hard on it. If you have any information, you can call 1-888-ATF-TIPS or email the address on your screen, atftips at atf.gov. Meantime, we're still working to learn the name of a 63-year-old woman who died in a two-alarm fire this morning. Yeah, that fire started around 9 at the Star Club Apartments on Starcrest Drive. That's on the north side. San Antonio Fire Chief Charles Hood tells his flames made their way up to the second floor after starting on the ground level. One dog and a 63-year-old woman were found dead once crews put that fire out. About three apartments sustained enough water and smoke damage that the tenants won't be able to return home. The Red Cross is here. We have occupant services established to make sure that those people can get back to some type of normalcy. Right now, it remains unclear what caused the fire. An arson unit is investigating. New at 5, while the daily numbers on COVID-19 are a cause for concern, there's another set of numbers that are concerning as well. During the pandemic, the number of domestic violence and child abuse cases here are on the rise. Paul Venema reports that information is contained in a new interactive dashboard now being made available online by the district attorney. There's been an increase in domestic violence cases in Bear County since the COVID-19 pandemic began. That's among the information now available on a dashboard District Attorney Joe Gonzalez has created on the District Attorney's website. A larger concern, Gonzalez said, is the number of pending cases. While there has been an increase, this increase that people will see on this dashboard is not because of an increase in domestic violence. The big problem is a backlog of cases that cannot be resolved due to the moratorium on jury service due to COVID-19. Those numbers, the dashboard indicates, have nearly doubled since the pandemic. The pandemic is going to end and we're going to get courts moving again. How are you going to catch up? It is a real problem and that's why we're asking for for additional funding with, uh, to the commissioner's court. To handle the backlog, he said he'll need to hire at least two additional prosecutors. This is a problem that we're dealing with, but we're dealing with it head on. And this is one of the ways we're, we're informing the public of, of what we're doing. The dashboard is a welcome resource, according to agencies involved in the fight against domestic violence. There are the victims that need to know what is going on. Uh, there is law enforcement. There is those of us who provide services. Uh, and there is the community at large. The DA says he plans to add other departments to the dashboard in the future. Paul Vandemar, KSAT 12 News.
Well, if you haven't had the chance to vote, now is the time. Tomorrow is the last day of early voting. That means if you don't make it to the polls by 10 o'clock tonight or between 8 a.m. and 10, 10 p.m. tomorrow, your last chance to vote is on Election Day. And taking a look at early voting totals thus far, as of about 1 o'clock today, there have been more than 608,000 ballots cast in person in Bexar County. That's a 51.2% voter turnout. That means in just the first 17 days of early voting, Bexar County has already su surpassed the total number of votes cast in the 2016 general election. That total voter turnout was just over 598,000 or 57.7% turnout. Jackie Callenden shared the update on Facebook today, writing in part, quote, Congratulations, Bear County, with a day and a half of early voting left and then on to Election Day. How high will we go? End quote. Well, we're going to continue to keep track of voter turnout and what it looks like at the polls as Election Day approaches. We'll also be hosting a series of live streams starting with an Election Day preview on Monday, November 2nd at 7 p.m. Yeah, we'll also have two live streams on Election Day, one in the morning and then live election returns and reactions on Election Night. We'll catch you up with all you need to know Wednesday morning and then again at 7 p.m. You can watch all our election coverage right here on KSAT 12 on KSAT.com on your phone or on the KSAT TV app, streaming on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, and much more. In just five days to go till Election Day and the presidential campaign trail is centered in the Sunshine State. Today, Vice President Joe Biden, former Vice President Joe Biden and President Donald Trump held dueling rallies in Florida. But time is running out for the candidates to reach key swing state voters as millions cast their ballots early. Nadia Romero has this snapshot at the race five days before the election. Well, Isis and Steve, when you look at 2016, there were 10 states President Trump won by less than 10 percentage points, and that included Texas and Florida. And those are both states where we're seeing surging coronavirus cases. But today, it's all eyes on Florida. Florida in focus. Well, I'm thrilled to be here in my, our home state, Florida. Right here in Florida. It's up to you. The presidential candidates converging in the Sunshine State, hoping to sway voters. We need a president who's going to bring us together, not pull us apart. We created the greatest economy in history, and now we are doing it again. The stakes in the tight race are higher for President Trump. In 2016, he defeated Hillary Clinton by 1.2 percentage points. Now, four years later, polls indicate the president must win the state to give this Florida resident another four years in the White House. We have to vote for Trump because it's between Trump and Sleepy Joe and anybody beats Sleepy Joe. But the candidates are competing for a smaller pool of votes. According to data from the Florida Department of Elections, by Thursday morning, more than 7 million people have already cast ballots in Florida. That's nearly half of all registered voters in the state. So far, more registered Democrats mailed in their ballots, but the number of people voting in person is increasing, and that favors registered Republicans like President Trump. I voted for a guy named Trump. <laughs> for Biden, rebuilding the blue wall of Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin Wisconsin is more important than Florida. Still, Biden and the DNC are outspending Republicans on ads in the states by two to one. A win in fast counting Florida would be a sign of strength on election night and could bring the presidential contest to an early and decisive end. If Florida goes blue, it's over. It's over. So both campaigns are trying to get that Latino vote. President Trump rolled out a plan he's calling the American Dream Plan, where he's promising 2 million jobs for Latinos and to help a half a million Hispanic business owners as well. Joe Biden says if elected, he would sign an executive order to help reunite 545 immigrant children separated at the border by the Trump administration. Live from Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Isis, back to you. Thank you, Nadia. You can stay up to date with all our election coverage right now on KSAT.com. We have lists of early voting locations and hours and where you can vote on Election Day as well. Just go to Vote 2020 section on KSAT.com. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Outside with live cam, 66 degrees, man. Look at that beautiful blue sky. It's been a wonderful fall day here in South Texas. Really the only thing 
you could complain about the gusty winds that have been in place today, but they're going to relax this evening. So some good news there. Checking in with our weather watchers 70s out closer to the border 74 in Warren's backyard 72 at Talia's house in Eagle Pass 65 in Windcrest 63 up in Bulverde also reading 63 in Bernie this afternoon. Next few hours temperatures will drop pretty quickly because skies are clear. The air is dry and the winds that have been gusty so far today will relax within the next couple of hours by 10 o'clock will be in the low 50s, setting us up for another cold start tomorrow morning. We'll talk about what your Friday has in store and get you your first look at your trick or treat forecast for the upcoming Halloween holiday. That'll be up in just a bit. Thank you, Katie. While this week's cooler temperatures have been nice, they've also led to a shortage in blankets at the Salvation Army's emergency shelter. The Salvation Army says this year its supply was already low because of a lack of donations, as many families are struggling to stay afloat. Combine that with a greater need for people to keep warm, and the supply was depleted to just a few blankets rather quickly. Now they need your help. They do have to be new blankets because of the pandemic, we're not able to accept any used blankets at this time, regardless of the shape they're in. The Salvation Army is also in need of new towels, toiletries, and hygiene products. Mayhar says with winter approaching, they're also focused on collecting new coats for children and adults. If you'd like to make a donation, you can drop them off at the emergency family shelter on West Elmira Street. New at five, it's a day many kids look forward to all year long, but this year Halloween safety goes beyond just checking the treats. With the annual celebration just two days away, some leading health officials are making a final push to encourage families to be safe. Whether you're passing out candy or planning to trick or treat, health experts are urging everyone to do their part to promote safety this Halloween. In statements on Wednesday, various professors warned trick or treating is not safe this year and kids should be kept home. Others, however, say do your best to make it as safe as possible. When the children knock on the door, um, it becomes a really tight, confined space with a number of people there yelling trick or treat. And that just creates that close environment that we're really trying to avoid right now. While the CDC has already classified high contact trick or treating as high risk, the agency says the tradition can be made safer by wearing a mask, washing hands before touching treats, avoid direct contact with trick or treaters, give treats outdoors, or even setting up a station with individually bagged treats for kids to take. I'm really proud of what they're doing in my neighborhood. Um, everyone is setting up tables down the end of their driveway. Um, some people have put out big spider webs and they're hanging, hanging the candy from the spider webs. So the kids are still having the uh, trick or treating experience. There's still the social aspect to it, but it's done in a way that is safe. Now, when choosing a costume, keep in mind the CDC says a costume mask is not a substitute for a cloth mask. The CDC advises against wearing a costume mask over a cloth mask as it can make difficult, make it difficult to breathe. Well, tomorrow we here at KSAT will be presenting the 2020 Day of the Dead River Parade. It will look different this year. It is now virtual, but it still took an incredible amount of work and ingenuity to make it happen. Coming up tonight at six, I will take you behind the scenes for a look at what went into creating some of those beautiful barges that you're going to see tomorrow night. And don't forget, speaking of, to watch that parade tomorrow night right here on KSAT 12. Steve and I will be hosting the celebration from 8 to 10 p.m. So tune in to experience San Antonio's Day of the Dead River Parade from the comfort of your own homes. You can watch on TV or on your electronic devices. Yeah, again, the parade has already happened. Yes. There will be nothing happening no. along the river tomorrow night, but there will Check be on, it out your anyway, television. on your screen. Yeah, yeah. Cooler temps have hit South Texas, and that might mean you're spending more time working on home projects. Up next, we have a fall home maintenance checklist you might want to go over that can help you avoid costly bills in the future. As we change our clocks and fall back this weekend, it's a good time to test and change the batteries in your smoke detectors. It's also a good time for a few other fall fix ups around the house because as 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz reports a little maintenance now saves headaches and money later. 
fall is in the air and in your yard and in your gutters. It's important to clean them out so rain can drain and critters won't take up residence. As nights get nippy, it's the right time to check and replace weather stripping around drafty windows and doors. As the weather starts to get a little bit cooler, it's a good time to pay some attention to those indoor projects you may have been neglecting. The good news is a lot of them are easy to tackle yourself. Like the laundry room, water hoses on the back of your washer should be replaced about every five years. If they're brittle, swap them for braided stainless steel versions. And the dryer? Built up lint is a big fire danger. At least once a year, clean out the air ductwork and pour it on the back. Cleaning the lint out of your dryer can actually help the appliance run more efficiently and dry better. The water heater needs attention too. Draining it once a year will prevent water deposits from building up and keep you from a cold shower. There are some fall projects best left to the pros, such as servicing your home heating system and sweeping out the chimney. When it comes to keeping your home cozy and comfy and avoiding pricey problems down the road, home maintenance is key. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. So I uh, speaking of the time change, so Saturday, Halloween, our sunset is at 647. Then we fall back and on Sunday, our sunset is at 547. Wow. So it's coming. Yeah, it is coming. It's coming. But at least it's cool out there. We're going to have to do the whole. It feels but, nice, doesn't it? Oh, it's I love so, today. It's so nice. So nice. Here are our morning low temperatures. Uh, unseasonably cool for this time of year. Our average low in San Antonio is 56. We got down to 42 uh, this morning. So nice. We'll take it some upper 30s in the hill country. Here's where we're sitting currently. So with the sunshine and dry air, we've warmed up pretty nicely this afternoon. Reading 75 currently in Del Rio, 74 in Catula, but generally if you're along and north of Highway 90, your temperatures are in the 60s. Here are our current wind gusts, so it is still a little bit gusty out there uh, late this afternoon. A wind gust of 32 miles per hour in New Braunfels up to 28 here in San Antonio. As we head into the evening hours, once we get past sunset, these wind gusts are really going to drop off. So maybe for the next hour or so, we could still see some wind gusts up closer to 25, 30 miles per hour, but later this evening and overnight, winds will really, really relax. So as our winds become light this evening, that'll help our temperatures to drop pretty quickly. Low 60s by 7 o'clock, eventually into the low 50s as we get closer to midnight. Very nice, quiet fall weather out there this evening, and we're pretty much going to do it all over again tomorrow. With the exception of the winds, winds will be light all day tomorrow, becoming easterly at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Otherwise, we'll see 40s in the morning, up to the upper 60s, low 70s in the afternoon, maybe a couple of degrees warmer tomorrow afternoon, but you're really not going to notice. It's going to be another great fall day for us here in South Texas. So remember this time yesterday we were talking about Hurricane Zeta making landfall in South Louisiana. All this moisture you see here up in the northeast in New England, that is what is left over of once Hurricane Zeta. So that system quickly moved across the eastern portion of the country late last night and early this morning, now producing some rain up in portions of the northeastern United States. But here are all the storm reports, wind um, and tropical system storm reports because of Zeta yesterday. They extend all the way from down south Louisiana and New Orleans through the southeastern United States all the way up into southern Virginia. So some big time wind issues because of Zeta, um, not just in south Louisiana where it made landfall, but a across other portions of the country yesterday. Meanwhile, here at home, we've got a lot of sunshine today and skies will stay clear into the day tomorrow. Surface high pressure moving in over Texas. That's going to keep us uh, nice and quiet weather wise to finish out the weekend tomorrow. Really nice weather for our football games tomorrow evening. As we get into Saturday, that surface high pressure system will move away just a bit. Our winds will become southerly, but all we're really going to see the change there is pick up some high clouds on Saturday. So um, no rain issues, just a few of those high thin clouds will be skirting in on Saturday and they'll hang around into Sunday as well. Speaking of Saturday and Halloween, now we can kind of get into a more detailed trick or treat forecast for you. It is looking really, really good. I love this graphic. It's a nice social distance uh, trick or treating forecast here. This is Saturday evening. Again, a few high thin clouds in the sky. Winds will be light. Temperatures falling out of the 70s into the 60s. Humidity will still be low for trick or treating. It is going to be great weather for the upcoming holiday. Then we get that extra hour of sleep. That's some good news, but keep in mind your sunrise sunset times will be changing as we get into Sunday and early next week. We're going to keep humidity low through Election Day. I think you'll notice as we get into Wednesday, Thursday of next week, more clouds and also some slightly higher humidity. But for the next few days, more great fall weather 
on tap. I guys. loved your social distancing idea. I can't Did take. I was just going to do a table <laughs> and just spread out the candy. I like the tombstone like in the background. I don't think I didn't see that it said "Here lies 2020." <laughs> it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you put Katie. that in there, didn't you? All right. <laughs> by the way, the Cowboys have been hit hard by injuries, Greg. It's good that they're getting some people back. Yeah, but it's not Dak coming back. No. It's Zach coming back, which will help their offensive line, which has just been terrible this year. When we come back, more about his return after having a concussion kept him out of the last game. And Texas loses a top recruit in the nation. Coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Cowboys quarterback Andy Dalton did not participate in practice again today as he's still in the NFL's concussion protocol following that vicious hit he took in the 25-3 loss of the Washington football team. He did, however, participate in the quarterback team meetings today, which says the Cowboys are holding out hope that he might be ready to suit up against the Eagles on Sunday night football. Otherwise, it would be rookie Ben DiNucci under center. As a backup, the Cowboys are expected to bring back Cooper Rush, according to the NFL Network. A bit of good news, Zach Martin fully participated in practice for the second straight day after suffering a concussion in the 38 to 10 loss of the Arizona Cardinals, which forced him to miss the game against Washington. I feel a lot better. I think, uh, you know, today was not another step for me to, um, you know, get practice reps, feel some contact and uh, felt good with all that stuff. So confident going into this week, uh, be ready to go. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, I think the big thing for me too is, you know, um, you know, a couple years ago, I missed a couple games there, but I was able to at least be there uh, on the sidelines with the guys. And um, so I think that was the hardest part, not being able to, uh, you know, help out at all. Now, the Eagles are now nine point favorites over the Cowboys before kickoff Sunday night at 720. As we told you first last night, offensive lineman Max Sharping became the first member of the Houston Texans to test positive for COVID-19, forcing the shutdown of the team facility on Wednesday for deep cleaning. We found out when the Texans placed him on COVID-19 reserve list. At least it's a bye week for the Texans who are standing right now at one and six. The New York Giants has sent seven more players and two members of their coaching staff home after Will Hernandez tested positive for COVID-19. The team still practice without them today and are hoping to have most of them back for their Monday night game against Tampa Bay. The top prospect in the 2022 recruiting class, quarterback Quinn Hewers of South Lake Carroll, has decommitted to Texas. The 6'3", 205-pound prospect, who is considered to be the nation's number one recruit, has changed his mind about attending Texas after committing to the Longhorns in August. He made his announcement on Twitter, saying he hadn't fully explored his options in the recruiting process. It hasn't helped that the Longhorns have struggled this season with Tom Herman as head coach, uh, losing back-to-back -back games with the Big 12 before rebounding against Baylor last week, now having to face six-ranked and undefeated Oklahoma State on the road this Saturday. Now, he's only a junior, so he could change his mind again and go back. But the way the Longhorns are trending right now and how they're playing, probably not going to happen. Yeah, once a guy decommits, it's very rare that he recommits. Goes back. You're right. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. We'll be right back. Jackets again tomorrow morning, but short sleeves by the afternoon, and we'll continue that through the upcoming weekend. Halloween looking good. 60s Saturday evening for trick-or-treating, whether you're staying home or going out safely. Guys. All right, thanks for watching the News at 5. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.